Welcome to the American Folklife Center's 2024 Homegrown Concert Series. I'm Stephen Winnick, and for many years we have presented this series featuring the best in traditional music and dance from around the world here at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. in the beautiful Coolidge Auditorium. Today we are very happy to have with us Winborn. Um, so to get some more background and context for our concerts, we often do an interview. And today I am here with Will Thomas Rowan, Lauren Brunig, and Lynn Mahoney Rowan of Winborn. And you may notice if you're a fan of the group that we are one person short. Um, Jeremy Carter Gordon could not be with us tonight. So we miss him, but we're gonna have a great time with the Winborn trio. Now, um, our longtime followers may also remember that just about two years ago, we did a virtual concert with Windborne back when our concert series was being recorded remotely for the purposes of the pandemic. And at that time, we did an interview as well where we're each in our own home. So you can watch that online. And those are available both on the Library of Congress website and the Library of Congress YouTube channel and also on the Folklife Today blog. And so, um, I would also like to tell the audience that if you're finding this interview, that means that there's also a concert which is linked to it. So if you found this interview separately on the YouTube channel or the website, look for the concert because that's going to be the best part. <laughs> so here we are with uh, the members of Windborn and welcome to your second homegrown interview. Thank you. Thank Thank you. We're really you. excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah, we are really excited to have you in person this time, not virtually, although it was a great concert that you gave us last time as well. So we're excited to see what you do for us here in the Coolidge. And I'm not going to recap your entire career that we talked about last time, just because I can tell people to go and look for that interview. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about some current stuff in your, in your lives and career. And let's begin with tonight's concert. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you selected songs for the concert tonight? Well, I mean, like you said, it's too bad that Jeremy can't be here tonight, but that also means it's an opportunity for us to look at some of our older repertoire because Windborne actually originally started as us three. It was a trio um, uh, before it was a professional thing at all. It was um, something that just the three of us as friends wanted to um, do for fun. And so uh, for tonight, it was an opportunity to look back at some repertoire that is um, more for three voices rather than all four, or things that we never bothered adding Jeremy on and sort of stopped <laughs> singing. But I mean, but they're still great songs, and so you know we're going to sing some things we haven't sung in a long time, including a song called "Bayside Lament" that Will and I originally wrote, the two of us. Usually these days we do a lot of finding songs and um, uh, arranging them for four-part voices, but this is a one of the rare ones that we composed. And um, so that'll be fun to get to sing again. Um, and also looking at some repertoire um, from where we got our start when we started singing as a trio, it was a lot of music that we had learned from a singing camp that mm -hmm. we all attended called Village Harmony. And Village Harmony um, takes singing masters from different regions of the world that have traditions of harmony singing and teaches a whole bunch of teenagers and adults as well how to sing um, some of that musics of all those regions. Um, and so we're going to sing some music from the country of Georgia tonight, which we haven't sung in a long time. It's been these days we don't really, with the four of us, sing um, Georgian music because it's really a trio tradition. Mm -hmm. So it'll be fun to get to sing some of that again. All right. Um, any other songs that you're particularly excited to bring to us tonight? We'll definitely be doing some Corsican music as well, which mm -hmm. is another tradition that we were originally introduced to um, from Village Harmony. Um, yeah, I mean, we, you know, just to, to talk a little bit about us as a trio, like we, we were three friends. We went to Village Harmony as teenagers and just like came back from camp and we're like, we want to keep singing these songs. And so that's, mm -hmm. that's really how Windborn started. And it was in 2004 when we were um, in high school that we gave our first concert. And it was right after I had actually gone to, to Corsica with Village Harmony um, on their first study trip there. Um, and I came back and was like, hey, friends, there's this really cool new music that I've learned. Like, let's, let's sing some of it. So even though Corsican music is something that we do continue to sing as a quartet, um, it's, it really does feel like that's going back to like original, original flavor Windborn. <laughs> um, Very cool. And, and uh, yeah, it's a, there are ways to sing it with four voices that we, that we still do, but it's, it's, at, its at its core a trio singing tradition, so right. that'll be fun. And, right, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, and there's, you know, there's songs that we also have that uh, Jeremy has added parts to over the years, but still, still stand on their own as trio songs. So uh, you'll get to, you get to hear a lot of good stuff out of the archives. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because it's also, we will still sing some of our current repertoire, um, even though there's three of us, and some songs work with three people and some songs don't, we picked the ones that do. So, <laughs> um, but it's actually kind of, interesting to us to get to hear um, the different variation of how it sounds with only three parts harmony rather than four parts. It's different right. and it's um, kind of an interesting uh, variation and flavor on songs that at this point we know really well because we're used to singing it all the time. And so everything tonight will feel a little bit new. Yeah, yeah. Looking, and, at, it, looking at it with fresh eyes. Yeah. yeah. And the, the thing that's really, you know, we, we wanted to, of course, include some of the stuff that's more current on our repertoire because particularly in the past bunch of years as a quartet, we've really been focusing on, you know, songs of social struggle from movements of right. the past sung for the present day. And it, it wouldn't feel like a windborne concert if we didn't include some of those union labor songs, things sure. that, you know, are from the archives yeah. here yeah. Um, that, that really feels like it is uh, at a key piece of Winborn's current identity and, and the music that we want to be putting out into the world. So, so we'll have some of that too. Maybe even get the audience singing along a little bit. Awesome. Right, yeah. It's great and we love that you do that. We love that you've taken material from our archive and, and perform uh, both these older traditions and also songs of specific social movements um, mm -hmm. and, and current social movements. So that's going to be great. And it's kind of neat. You mentioned that you started in 2004. It's sort of like the 20th anniversary tour. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, and you're the trio. So that's kind of cool. Thanks for putting a number on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> so no, it's true. This is our 20th, crazy, 20th windborn anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in general, what makes a song stand out to you and make you say, we, we have to learn that one? Is it's, there something? I mean, is there? <laughs> I, I, I can't say that there's one specific thing, but there's kind, of, there's kind of three filters that a song has to pass through. It has to be something that we are at least interested in singing about in terms of, in terms of the words. Um, and that could, that could be, uh, that could be any number, it could be for any number of reasons. It could have to do with the content of the, of the text itself that, that's being sung, or it could be something about where it's from. Um, but we just, we have to be interested in it in that way. And the second piece is it has to be, the melody has to grab us. It could be a, a song that is, you know, has the most interesting words in the world, but if we don't enjoy the melody, um, you know, that's an incredibly subjective thing, of course, but if we don't, if, if the melody doesn't, uh, grab us that uh, that's really just uh, <clears throat> not going to it's not going to work for us and you know sometimes we'll sometimes we'll find a text that has no melody and we'll find a melody that has no text and put them together um, and uh, and we'll get to it that way and then sort of I guess the third filter is we have to uh, it has to it has to end up working out in for us to arrange it um, you know, there's plenty of plenty of songs over the years that have that have been perfectly perfectly uh, fine songs, and then just we haven't ended up getting through the process of uh, of making a full arrangement of it, which is for us is a very it's a very uh, mercurial process. It, it could it could happen in any number of ways. It's very it's very improvisational how we how we make our vocal arrangements. You know, we, we just sort of play around with, with the melody, with har different harmonies that we can think up um, until there's something that, that inspires us to keep working on it. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we get stuck and, and we need to set it aside and come back to it later. And there are certainly have been things that we've set aside and we haven't gotten back to them. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the creation of the harmonies, like that is really what the, the craft of Windborn is. Like we don't do much... Um, original composition of melodies, but uh, that that like taking these old melodies yeah. and and writing new harmonies, sort of like bringing them through the past to the present day, is is what is really like the the thing that we do. And it uh, yeah, I think the it, it is a very subjective thing, <laughs> but it's also a thing that like as a group we know when it's right. Mm -hmm. You know, we might have different individual opinions about like what should happen with this moment. And usually when we're in the arranging process, if we are still like butting heads a lot about something, that's a sign that like we just haven't found the right option yet. And, and we'll play with all these different things. And the thing that we often settle on is, is usually not one of the original like things that we were talking about for that like chord or that, 
you know, that, that moment in the song. But the, you know, we kind of say that the, the instrument that we, that we are best at playing is Windborne as a group, because that, that arranging process that is this collaboration, this improvisation, and then refinement of all of those ideas, that really comes up with something that's quite different than what any one of us would, would or could create on our own. And, and that's the sort of the core of the Windborne um, sound, is, is that, that group collaboration and that process. That's cool, and it, and it sounds like, you know, for a song to become a windborne song, it not only has to grab you in the first place, but then it has to survive this evolutionary <laughs> process, mm -hmm. right? So it's almost like survival of the fittest for windborne. Yeah, yeah we put it through uh, the ringer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the phoenix rising from the ashes. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, that is, that is really interesting. So, so how, as you mentioned, you were a trio initially before right. um, Jeremy uh, joined the group. So um, how is, wh what's the difference between like the trio approach and, and the, the larger quartet sound? Oh boy. Um, I mean, like we said, it was so long ago and, and the trio version of Windborne really, like Lauren said, grew out of us uh, as teenagers wanting to keep singing a lot of the music we learned from camp. So originally it didn't have to be all songs that we um, wrote or arranged. It was In fact, some, quite few of them were ones yeah, that, we had, that we had put a, our a own lot creative of, spin on. A lot of things that we um, had uh, learned fully arranged. You know, full, we learned three harmony parts and performed it. And it was, um, I guess what stayed the same from then until now is it's about the, the love of singing together and the love of being immersed in that harmony. Um, and over the years, we started somewhat as a trio, but over the years, we've been more interested in that process of creation, um, of creating our own harmonies and rearranging the song to become, to feel like ours, as opposed mm -hmm. to something that we're just um, parroting. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Right. <laughs> um, so I think the difference is now um, a number of things. I mean, now we, we definitely do a lot more of that creation and a lot more of making songs our own. Um, and we also are a little bit more picky about caring about, I think, what the songs are about and what we're saying. And we didn't think as deeply about that when we first started, when we were teenagers in general. Um, we weren't, and also, I mean, it, it, it wasn't, we weren't thinking of it as a professional thing. And that's also just a different way of looking at making music when it's just for fun or when you're thinking about it as something that you are putting out into the world. Because now I think we do think about what we want to say to people, what we want to sing to people and put out and put out into the world. And we weren't thinking about that as teenagers. I wasn't thinking about that as a teenager. <laughs> no. Yeah. And I think, I mean, obviously, like having Jeremy's voice in the group, Jeremy sings bass, and so mm -hmm. that, that adds a different sort of musical dimension to Absolutely. the group. Yeah. Um, and it also, you know, in our arranging, you know, we don't arrange for a soprano, alto, tenor, bass. We arrange for Lauren, Lynn, Will, and Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. um, and one of the things that we really like to do is playing around with different voices taking the melody. So in a lot of choral music, the soprano line is, yeah. always has the melody. And in windborne songs, it's almost never as simple as that. Mm -hmm. You know, we put the melody in a lot of different places. Sometimes we switch who sings melody verse to verse or even line to line. Um, and having Jeremy's, you know, bass voice um, underscoring all of that it really changes the sound overall. And um, yeah, I mean, and I think what Lynn said is really true, the sort of thematic shift. Um, you know, there's, there's so much good music in the world and we can't possibly sing at all, but yeah. uh, over time we've moved away from doing quite the, the wide variety of, of like music from other cultures that like we learned in at Village Harmony where we were singing music from Bulgaria and South Africa and Georgia and Corsica and, and you know, lots of different places. And we still really uh, enjoy researching and developing music from, from you know, non-English speaking uh, uh, repertoires, repertoires, but right. it's uh, that's shifted a little bit. Like these days, we're singing. We do a lot of Quebecois music. We do a lot of music from the Occitan region in mm -hmm. France. We still sing a bunch of Corsican music, a lot of English and American, um, and then and that sort of core of, of songs of social struggle, sort of being a theme throughout all of the all of the music. So it's it's just been a, it, it's an evolution, and yeah, um, and that's been it's it's fun to look back on. Yeah, that's very cool. Now that said, that you 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 know you're not doing as much of some of these non-English language repertoires. Your big TikTok success was one of these songs. Could yeah. you talk about that experience, uh, the you know the the vir going viral experience? 
Yeah, well, the, um, the sort of big moment for us, yeah, it was during the pandemic where there was this video of us singing a Corsican song in Mont Saint-Michel, which is this um, sort of monastery on an island in France. We were in the refectory, which is essentially like the dining room. Um, which has even, you know, even a, just the dining room of, of Mont Saint-Michel has incredible acoustics. And yeah, it was, it was a really bizarre moment, to be honest. Um, well, we were actually there right before the pandemic. Right, yeah, sorry. The, we and were, then, yeah. And then we posted the video, yeah, yeah mid, sort of mid-pandemic, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever that means in yeah. terms of time. But, and then, yeah, it ended up going viral. And I mean, one of the things that that really showed us was that, like, People out there love vocal music, even if that's not something that they necessarily would have been able to articulate. You know, it got in front of so many different eyes and ears, and then all of a sudden people were, were like, oh, this singing thing, that's really cool. <laughs> um, and it was, it, it opened, it, it put us in front of a lot of new audience, and it means that like there are um, a lot of people now coming to Windborne shows or you know coming to our live streams that that wouldn't necessarily have said like hey the thing that I'm going to seek out is vocal folk music yeah. Yeah. and yeah. and that that's you know it's been one of the really sort of saving graces of social media which can feel such uh, like such an energy drain sometimes sure. um, to to be to have things that we put out into the ether and then to have real people show up at shows and say like, hey, I came across your video on TikTok, on Instagram or Facebook, and then I saw that you were playing in my town and now I'm here at your concert. And that's just, you know, that's, that's the best. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good reminder that part of what our passion for doing what we're doing is other people share, which is really just the beauty of those harmonies. And the reason that we love singing in those resonant spaces is because we want to hear those harmonies reverberate in there. We want to be in the middle of that. And um, that's partly why we sang that song in particular is because we just, those harmonies lent themselves well. Those chords were a little slower moving than some of our other songs right. and lend themselves well to big echoey spaces. Yeah. Um, but you know, we always love the harmonies and I think how people responded to that video shows that a lot of people really love harmonies and that that's a very human thing. And I think it's a good reminder that that's sort of what connects a lot of us, yeah. Yeah. is that love. Yeah, amazing. And talk a little bit about how you use social media for promoting the group and, and getting your music out there. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, gosh, it's one of sort of like the main drivers of our of our sort of promotion these days. It's It's a place, you know, that, that we can get in front of a lot of new eyes. Um, yeah, uh, hmm, what is our strategy? It just our strategy is to, is to keep trying things until something works, yeah, really. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Um, you know, we've, we've found that people definitely respond really well to, to you know, videos where there's good acoustics, so we, we seek that out various places. We've, you know, we've been, we were in a, a, a glass orb in uh, a glass dome in Lithuania yeah. at one point we were found ourselves in a and like at 10 at night in a racquetball court in Appleton Wisconsin which had a seven second echo like a seven second delay we found oh. ourselves in all sorts <laughs> of interesting places but also just you know just try you know just trying you know the uh, just a song that we think is interesting singing singing it somewhere that looks nice and we just put about we just put a bunch of things out there, and if something if something starts to work, then we just you know we just try to and I follow that lead a little bit. The the strategy is really like we're not trying to do the TikTok trends or like we're not we're just doing the thing that we do and and continuing to share it, which is why I think it doesn't actually feel like a strategy, yeah. but yeah, mm -hmm. it, it is. It's we have not had much luck, and and I think honestly a lot of musicians that are trying to like make you know, get a foothold in social media, like the thing to do is to just do the thing that you are, like that, that you want to be known for and, and just keep at it because, you know, we, we have, you know, we have friends who've had like viral videos for just like some like random funny moment that happened that had nothing to do with their music. Yeah. And that that's great and that's a really fun moment, but it doesn't help actually getting people engaged with their music. So like, yeah, our big strategy is just keep, keep singing, keep sharing that and, and keep, um, you know, keep, keep finding interesting places to sing. Yeah. yeah. 
No, I think that's true. I, I work on the social media for, for the American Folklife Center, and we definitely find that the social media platforms change so much over time <laughs> that whatever you think of to do <laughs> doesn't necessarily work next time anyway. Right. So the yeah. best thing to do, as you say, do what you're best at, put out your best, you know, put your best foot forward, put out your best sure. song, your best sound, and just hope that it, well, the, that, it, that it catches on, yeah. The other thing I will mention, though, that I've noticed is visuals and just yeah. Having, yeah. having things that look different. I think part part of why that one particular video in Mont Saint-Michel got big is because it was in Mont Saint-Michel, but also because we were huddled together and doing this, which when we sing Corsican music, there's a way you can amplify your own voice through the palm of your hand, yeah. and it's how we were taught to sing Corsican music in Corsica from our teachers, yeah. um, and so it's how we're used to singing it. But it looks different when people, you're just scrolling by, you see people huddled like this, you're like, what's going on, as opposed yeah. to standing there with microphones. Not that we don't post things of us standing there with right. microphones, but I think things that look interesting are different. And we've also posted videos of us sitting around a kitchen table, because that's, again, it looks different. Anytime we see a interesting spot or a pretty spot or a pretty sounding spot there is a little bit of thought to can we make this look visually different or interesting and i think that's part of that's where the strategy comes in that's the part i'm not good at that's <laughs> that's the part that lauren yeah, that's the, why i'm pointing the, at the, the framing of the shots the framing and the, of the sh it's all, all of that, that stuff that you didn't know you had to do that to become a musician did you yeah <laughs> right, right. So a lot of other jobs <laughs> other than the singing. a lot of other jobs right. and so there is you when you say oh it's just putting a lot of stuff out there you you sell yourself short lauren does an awful lot of careful video editing and planning and setting up shots. And I have to shout out Jeremy too. He's, Jeremy it's, also, the yeah. two of us share the social media stuff and it yeah. would definitely not be where it is without without dear Jeremy. That's, yeah. it's, it's Jeremy and Lauren's, <laughs> that's not what Will and I do in one day. <laughs> well, it's great that you're able to do that yourself. You don't have a fantastic crew the way we have here at the Library of Congress helping us with these interviews. So it's great that, well, we that often, you're able to do it. Yeah. We often do uh, recruit a crew as it's happening. Yeah. You know, random passersby. Uh, uh, you know, if you if anyone's ever seen a video of us singing in in like an echoey space and the camera's been moving, that is almost always just a random other person in the space that we've been like, hey, yep. can you hold this camera and walk around us while we sing? Yep. Um, and that's been a fun sort of way to connect with people, and it again makes for an interesting shot. Right. Sure. And we never know what we're going to get, so yeah, <laughs> it's exciting for us. Too. Yeah. So not to get heavy, but the last time uh, we ha had an interview we spoke about the passing of Tony Barron and Larry mm -hmm. Gordon. And very soon after that interview, Lisa Null passed away. Um, we just got a, an email uh, a couple of nights ago that John Roberts is retiring from performing uh, mm -hmm. for health reasons. And it seems like um, the, 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 the elder generation that we've all revered and loved um, is not performing as much or not around as much or in right. fact passing on. And you guys are going from being the you know, next generation to being the current top of the folk scene. Hmm. Um, and I wonder if, you, if, you're, if you're feeling that, because um, I think from the outside perspective, it, it feels that way. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I also, you know, obviously there's like so many people to, to honor in that, but I want to also just add in Brian O'Donovan um, and yeah. Norma Watterson and Heather Wood. Yeah, um, absolutely. Just, uh, three just, other really important people yes. that have that have passed on in the past few years that have been supporters and influences um, of us. And yeah, thanks yeah. For, for bringing them up as well. I mean, I was, I was just talking to my dad, so I, I will get around to answering your question, but the, yeah. our, our current project right now, um, we're working on releasing an album of, of music for midwinter, songs of solstice, songs of midwinter celebrations, um, and that's gonna be out for this, this um, holiday season, and that, um, so much it draws so much on you know the work of Tony Baron and Noel Singley Clear that you know my dad performed yeah. with and I was talking to him in recently and and had just a really beautiful moment with him where he was saying that you know I he was like I feel good about retiring because I know that our music is in good hands oh. and hmm. that you know it's it feels you know to hear you say like we are now like the we're not the next generation we're the current like I don't <laughs> quite think of myself as that yet but. <laughs> These are songs that have such important history. You know, they come from a lot of places and uh, and traditions and communities that that are are so important for bringing people together around celebration, around different times of the year, around different causes. 
and it is it does feel really important to keep singing these songs yeah. and mm -hmm. and we we hear that from our audience you know both in person and online people saying like oh this is a song that i remember learning when i was a kid at this event or this gathering and and being excited to like see these songs re reappearing so yeah, it, it does feel important and, and sort of vital to the, the folk community to keep carrying them on. Yeah. I think it gives me a real visceral feeling of being part of something bigger and part of a flow. And, and I can, um, I, I just, I really feel the importance of all those who've come before us and, on all, and all the ancestors. And, you know, especially saying, saying that here in, this, in yeah. this place with so much history, but we wouldn't be where we were without having grown up listening to Noel Sing We Clear and without um, you know, Larry Gordon, who's also passed, having founded right. Village Harmony, which is right. how we met, and also without Brian O'Donovan hearing us and saying, come do this show and elevating us and all the different people who throughout our both lives and careers have um, taught us, have encouraged us, have um, helped us and given us a new platform, have um, coached us, have... Uh, um, really made space and it really it's just such a, a visceral feeling of the connectedness of humanity and throughout not only space but time and yeah. and it's just it's such a I guess I guess it means I hope that or I'll be interested to see when it's our turn to pass that on yeah. because it really I, I yeah. suddenly feel like I'm a part of of a flow and it's just it's just going, you know. And Absolutely, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. And all the, all these people we have mentioned, they've been they've been so they've been so important in our lives. And I feel like the the best thing that we can do to honor what they've given us is to keep it going. Right. Yeah. yeah. We we've talked a lot in recent years about what it means to be a tradition bearer, hmm. and you know it's it's sort of weird to sort of recognize oneself as a tradition bearer but you know we we grew up in families and communities where social singing was part of the thing that you just did you know we grew up going to pub sings and morris dance events and shape note sings and all of these things where like someone would start singing and people would join in and they'd make up harmonies and and that was really part like laid the groundwork for all of the rest of the singing yeah. that we've done and and all of these folks were were also part of, you know, they were the tradition bearers that we learned from, that we grew up with, that sort of shaped us into the music makers that we are today. And yeah, it just, it does feel important to be, be carrying yeah. that on and, and uh, sort of owning that, uh, you know, owning that and picking up that mantle so that we can yeah. keep, keep it going into the future. Yeah, and it's interesting because if you, if you think about some of the people you've mentioned who do music at the closest to, to yours, so Norma and, and Heather, right. you know, in the, at the beginning of their careers, they were the young tradition, and yeah. the Watersons were this young group. Yeah. And their approach to harmony was different, and y you were following in their footsteps, in the sense you mentioned that, you know, the melody moves from person to person right. sometimes. That's something mm -hmm. that the Watersons and yeah. the young tradition were so known for but not so much the Copper family in the you know, generations before them. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like, yeah, that tradition, that's now become part of the tradition that, mm -hmm. that you guys are picking up. So I'm really glad that you mentioned um, all the people that you did because I think um, honoring those ancestors is uh, not only important, but it's something that you do very well through your performance and through your talking about them. So yeah, so thank you for that. Um, now we last caught up with you, I guess, almost two years ago. Um, so why don't you tell us about any projects that you've been doing since, since yeah. then? Yeah. Well, the current the current project of that um, is we're coming sort of coming towards the 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 fruition of is our is our midwinter uh, album, which Lauren mentioned. Cool. Um, you know, it it draws fairly heavily on the repertoire of Noel Singley Clear of the Watersons, um, also with some some uh, material which is sort of more more from contemporary voices like um, Jennifer Cutting, um, Zoe Mulford, um, Alison Burns from Scotland. Um, and it's really, it's really sort of taking a look at, at traditions of midwinter and celebrations of midwinter. Um, and, and, and not necessarily trying to have an exhaustive look at, at all that could possibly be celebrated then, but sort, sort of like what are, what are pieces that are important in our lives? Um, and 
Um, since it's Windborn, it is not only a musical recording, it is also going to be a book. <laughs> um, we've been working uh, with an artist. You know, the name of the artist is Matt, Matt Spencer, Matt Spencer okay. um, who has been uh, making these wonderful illustrations for the book, um, which, which sort of paint a picture which is at once timeless and also very much modern. Um, so it, it's sort of like a, a, a you know, it is, it's, uh, sort of a portrait of community coming together um, and and celebrating and, and being warm in the cold time. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're just really excited about that. Um, it's going to be coming out in a couple months. And it's called uh -huh. To Warm the Winter Hearth. Yeah, Excellent. And, and that's, I mean, both working on that album, but also all the repertoire that supports it has, has actually been a really big focus of our past few years. You know, it's, we're trying you know, our, our most recent album to this was of Hard Times and Harmony, which came right. out in, in 2020, and it's now 2024, and we're releasing To Warm the Winter Hearth, and we would like to be getting on a slightly uh, shorter time span between albums. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, after we released Of Hard Times and Harmony, we knew, you know, the, the Christmas show in Boston that we'd been a part of, Christmas Celtic Sojourn with Brian O'Donovan, we, we, that was sort of, um, wrapping up, and uh, particularly when, when Brian, um, with Brian's death, that, that shifted a lot. And we knew that we wanted to be working on a holiday show of our own, sort of in the tradition of the Christmas Revels, the Noel Sweeney Clear, Christmas Celtic Sojourn, all of these different um, uh, things that have, have influenced how we celebrate the holidays, and particularly what the holidays sound like to us. Um, and so the, the past couple of years, we've, we've been developing our own music of midwinter show that um, this this year will be our third our third run of it, and it's I think we are are well established in in that now um, in our in our own minds at least mm -hmm. of of this repertoire that much of which will be on the album. But that's been a a big piece of what our the the creation of the past couple of years has been is is developing that and and making that into a show that's more than just a concert, more than just like presenting songs one at a time, but, but creating something that has a little bit of a feeling of ritual and has a, has a, a sense of like celebration and community around it, um, even more than just a regular concert might. Yeah. And so yeah, those, those have been a large part of our focus. Mm -hmm. And also just, you know, touring. Like we went to, we went to Australia for the first time oh, this amazing. year. We spent about cool. a month there, um, and that was really fun, doing a bunch of festivals yep. and concerts. Um, we were in Belgium, and we were in Finland and, and uh, Norway and Sweden, and we've been to a lot of places. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. We've been expanding all, our touring All over reach. North America, and yeah. So traveling to new places. Yeah. Well, we can't wait for your holiday album. Um, you, you mentioned Jennifer Cutting, who, who's a staff member here at the American Folklife Center. Um, and, and it was an honor to us in the Ocean Quartet, who performed a song with you, but we didn't actually get a chance to perform with you because of the pandemic. Right. So we recorded our parts separately. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the song, The Turning Year, which I presume yep. is the same song yes. that you're going yeah. to put yeah. on your album. So that is something we'll, we'll definitely look forward to. Um, and, and also your, your projects that come after that. And I, I can't wait to see the book also. And it definitely resonates with us, I think, here at the library too, what you're saying about um, winter traditions. Because mm -hmm. you know, we, ha we have our traditions even here in the library, mm -hmm. but then our individual staff members have our own traditions at home too. And, and right. we definitely um, enjoy um, that time of year and, and, and working creating that feeling of continuity with with mm -hmm. the past and with our ancestors. So yeah. so thanks for doing that. We're going to look forward to those concerts and that album. So one of the plans that you had for today that, that got changed because of the situation with Jeremy was that you were going to do some research um, in uh, in the archive. What, what um, ideas do you have for research and what are you, as I, I assume that is sort of for long-term planning for future projects. Yeah, it will, one of the uh, one of the next step projects that we have on our radar is um, sort of going back to our roots and and you know kind of goes back to that that question of of considering ourselves or recognizing ourselves as as tradition bearers and um, sort of focusing in very specifically on regional music from New England and so like the songs that that we grew up with the traditions we grew up with and um, how how we bring you know how we bring the windborne take to some of those and so we were 
uh, we're starting the, the research around um, you know, songs from, from different, place, uh, different New England states. And um, yeah, we're, we're just, just in the beginnings of that. Um, and, and we're trying to, there's, there's not too much to say about it yet because we haven't actually started the arranging process, but we're excited about, about uh, you know, really, really going back to our roots and, and focusing in on the, where, where did we come from? What are the traditions that we grew up with? And, and how can we um, sort of remix them for the current day? Great. Well, is there anything that <clears throat> I haven't asked about that you would like to tell our audiences? I think we've covered mm. it. Yeah. Really covered it. It's, it's really just wonderful to be here. We're really glad to sing in this incredibly beautiful space. Um, we're excited to, to keep this relationship with the library going and, yeah, and, and just keep sharing our love of vocal harmony with, with you all. Well, thank you so much, Will, Lauren, Lynn. We look forward to your concert this evening. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Windborne, I should say, for those who are looking for the band name. Thank you.